Hello Fearless Gamers and welcome to Touching Base here on Fearless Games. And what an exciting day it is. It's our first episode ever on our new channel. I'm psyched. Yeah? Yay. So now, be it our first episode, no one here knows who, who we are. So why don't we start with introductions and we'll start down there. Hi everybody, I'm the guy with no face, hopefully. Uh, my name is, well we'll go with the Stark Lord's name on my channel, so we can just use any variant of that as my name. Uh, it'll be in the description below, there's nothing on it right now, but eventually, with that channel and this channel, we'll be talking about Warhammer 40k primarily, uh, specifically the Sisters of Battle. I know I'm like the only person in the world that plays them still. Uh, the Imperial Guard, and some Tau when their new codex comes out, because they already have way too many models that I don't play. Um, past that, we'll be talking about what I do with them, how I play with them, which is basically how you shouldn't play with them, because I'm terrible at this game. And that's about it, and some game mechanic ideas I have. On to the next dude. How you doing, guys? I'm Matt, also known as Cypress Joker. Channel. Um, here, I'm just kind of the, the goofball new guy of the group. Uh, you know, I'm going to be kind of talking about, at least in my personal videos, I'm going to be talking about you know, the lore of 40k, you know, the, 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 the fluff of each individual army. I play a lot of Space Marines. I'm working on an Orc army. I've Forever. been working on the work army for two Ever. years. Three years. <laughs> Three years. <laughs> Three years. Um, so you'll be getting a lot of fluff discussions out of me, and I'm looking to maybe help you guys build your own armies with your own cohesive plots to them. Kind of make yourself a little more interesting at the table. Uh, it's, it's me, man. Okay, I'm Matt as well. There's two of us, and you, I, you probably know me from Helios Raven's Nest. Um, I'm the veteran in the group. I've been doing wargaming for 12 years now. It's ridiculous Such how long I've been nerd. doing this for. <laughs> what a dork. Um, I primarily play Dark Angel Space Marines because screw the Space Wolves. Boo, Boo Space Wolves. Um, yes, this is probably the only channel that will not defend them. <laughs> I play the Eldar. I play Imperial Guard, preferably Adaptus Mechanicum because tanks win wars. And I play the Chaos Armies, mainly the Thousand Suns, and I've got another one working, but that's not up and running yet. And what you're prim primarily going to see for me is us doing battles, so battle reports, how-to tutorials, and showcase videos. And so let's move on to the final guy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. What's <laughs> up? Uh, this is James, otherwise known as Keeper of the Fortress. Somewhere around here will be in the channel link. And um, <clears throat> I'm a bit of the wild card. Uh, you never know what I'm gonna do when I'm playing the game, when I'm building stuff. It's, it's, it's a little wild, a little crazy. But uh, I play primarily Space Marines, Dark Angels myself, because the first Legion, we bring it. Yeah. Um, I like the Thousand Suns as well. I have a pre-Heresy Thousand Suns for it because I like red better than blue. Um, <laughs> other than that, I, I'm a fan of the Necrons and the Tau, although Tau are kind of eh right now. But um, yeah. what you're gonna get from me is a lot of randomness. I'm gonna do some stuff on how to paint some models, at least how I paint them, so you know how to paint them better than me because I'm terrible. And you're gonna get some things on some amazing quick conversions. A lot of stuff I'm doing bases, because let's face it, the bases complete the model. Uh, you're also gonna get some stuff, I mean, that's non 40 k related. Some little battle tech, maybe a little cold mecha warrior a little bit, I don't know. Ooh. But uh, that game, it's a fun game, it's still around. I don't know how to play it, so I really can't say it's fun, can I? But uh, I'm gonna learn, and hopefully some of us will too. Okay, and so <laughs> let's get on to our first topic, which will probably be the only topic of the show, yep. and it's a very important one. The Necron Codex just got released. Boom! Oh, <gasps> oh man! I'm not pointing to anything. I just want boom. Yeah. Um, so you were dropping it thoughts, like it was hot. thoughts on the new Necron Codex? I like it. It's a bit of a retcon and a bit of an expansion, which is something pretty good don't retcon like too. You know, yeah. they beforehand the fluff was bland. We are, we are robots. Tasteless and, and, and yeah, faceless, like and soulless <laughs> space for, automatons. For those who are not really aware of the Necron army, their whole fluff originally was just their dudes. They got robot bodies and they forgot they used to be dudes. And, and they kill they, everybody. And, and they just go crazy. around killing things. Faceless, soulless it. space robots. Basically, and they were they were awful. Now they're they're just get off my lawn. Yeah. 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 Just they're get bland. off my lawn. Is what they wanted. But now yeah. what? And they, now there's so much more. What we, they've done, which we all highly agree on, is they added a, enough of a fluffed um, tinge to them 
so you can actually create your own stories like you could with the Space Marines or the Eldar. Like, they made them fluffable. You, you, you have personality finally. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're faceless, soulless, but some automatons with pizzazz. Yeah, they got a little jazz bit hands. more, a little yeah, bit more. Dynasties? Really? We got, actually, we got yeah. dynasties. <laughs> yeah, they got the new <laughs> dynasty. I so love the dynasty. They kind of <laughs> took a whole Tomb Kings approach they with They did, them. but just in a bad It thing. was a good move because, look, we got Eldar Craft Worlds, we got Imperial Guard Regiments, we got Space uh, Marine Chapters. We got Imperial Guard. Everyone's got something. Yeah, and we got, got something. And with the Necrons, we had robots. Necrons. So <laughs> now we had got dynasties. Bots. Now there's a reason why you yeah. paint them whatever color you want. Yeah, yeah. much more. It's 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 refreshing yeah. as yeah. far as the change yes. goes. It's very breathes new life into the army, and I like that. And, and not only kind of did they the refresh there. the fluff, they've actually refreshed yeah, a lot of the yes, rules. Yes. They did refresh the rules. Two things that I like really much about the Codex. One is not rules-based, plastic immortals, I mean, the troops, and they're plastic, so it doesn't cost you $400 it's, it's a, to make an army. Yeah. yeah. Double plus right B, there. No more phase out. You can actually play through the yes. bitter end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was always like that the thing I always hit on when I played Necron. It made it really unfair. Like, it's like, I got 20 miles left. Oh, too bad you're off the table. Maybe yeah. that guy has one mile left and he can still win the game. Yeah, like yeah. that was that was how I always played against Necrons. It's like, okay, well let me let me take my guys and just get rid of as many of yours as possible. The goal went from being you know, playing the game to its conclusion as the the whatever the objective, as whatever the objective yeah. was to just get rid of the necrons. Basically, <laughs> they didn't go away. It made the necron player go from making a strategic army, trying out new things, to how can I make an army that won't phase out right away? And exactly. it usually ended yeah. up with you fighting the exact same army each time. Well, they or eventually they maximize the number of each guys with the necron. Rule, but, so they could spam out that, right. they could avoid that last But now order. they've yeah. done so many great improvements, like the Scarabs are nasty. So much mm -hmm. nastier. Especially with the new um, special rule that they've got. And Tropic Strike. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my arm safe. Yeah. Yep. Get out I of there. I my vehicles, I think they're in, it's nice yeah. to that. But it's, everything about them has just been amped am up a bit. Uh, yeah. The Ghost Buffet Marine, even though it's the exact same rule set, it just feels refreshing because we have you know new models for the Immortals, we yeah. have new yeah. models coming out. New different out. types of Ghost Weaponry. I, I also like yep. the Tesla Weaponry. Yes, Tesla, Tesla Weapons on. are nasty just for the sheer fact that if with enough right numbers you can just Honestly, wipe out squads. Anything yeah. with the word Tesla in it is cool. Yeah. So yeah. They're good. Yep. Well, it's true. It's true. Let's, we can't yeah, deny like, it. Can't um, it at all. Like, for example, um, for anyone, you know, you can check this out on, on the Games Workshop website, they outright say it, the Tesla rule is is if you roll a six, you make an additional attack. You make an additional hit you on a model. That's pretty two cool. additional hits. Yeah, two yeah. additional. So, for, so, so, if you, so if you've got a four shot gun and you roll four sixes, you just got an eight dudes. That's yeah, pretty cool. It's, it's, it's chain lightning. It's yeah. cool. and, and what's cool with that is, um, if you look back, you know, a little bit of fluff here again, mm -hmm. look back at the old fluff with them, when they were fighting the Eldar, there was a group of Necron warriors who just pretty much shot lightning at them. Yes. And now you can actually do that do with that. the army. Yeah. Which right. is nice. Yep. Um, the, I like the new addition with the Satan as yeah. well, or Satan, Catan, however you guys are. Star God. I call them a Star God. That's what they were called. Yeah. I call them Satan because it's, it's a C, the dash, and Tan. When you say Catan, I think of the SNL guy, and it, it just loses all seriousness at that point. I don't know what oh God, about. Chris Catan. Oh yeah, God. See? Why would you... Night of the Roxbury, really. <laughs> that was great. Okay. Anyways. So, but it's very interesting now how they did it. It's a bit of a recon again. We go away from having gods gods on the battlefield, which wasn't really fair in 40k and when, yeah. when you hit Apocalypse, I mean, oh, firstly, it was, you, you, you could easily circumvent them, they were slow, but mm -hmm. not that big of a scare once you get away from them on the battlefield, but once you hit 40k, the Titans are like, what is this? D-Gun, dead. And yeah. it was just like, well, that was kind of lame, they're supposed to be this godlike being. Yeah. In the fluff, it stays, they can make a, a black hole to swallow up an entire sector. Well, which what's interesting is, is in the fluff that they're saying, like, they have the power to like melt a land raider into slag. They're just not creative enough to realize they can. Yeah. Whatever they, whatever which they is can do, what they do. Yeah. Bull. They, they, know, they know what they can do, but because they're so broken and shattered, they can't, they've basically forgotten that they're gods. Yeah. yeah. Which is an interesting thing. It's kind of like Cain with it's, Eldar. Yeah, with yeah. the Eldar, Kalamash on Cain, which I think he knows, though. But yeah. still, it's he, awesome. They kind of made it where, you but know... But it went from having... A it's god. Not, it's not a god. It's yeah. just an avatar of that god. It's, right. it's yeah. like, it kind of mirrors the, the Eldar, like I said, and, it, 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 and their whole cons of the two kind of mirror each other now. And you can customize them so you can make your own satans. Yeah, it gives you an awesome opportunity to kick bash or scratch build something looking really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
And overall, it's just, I feel it was a bit of a retcon for the, for the uh, Satan. One big retcon is Pariah is just kind of like, what's a Pariah? I don't know what Pariah yeah, is. You people are crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. If you still have the models, you can basically throw them around and say they're a lord or a crypt effects or whatever. You could also yes, use them whatever, to crypt represent effect. the Triarch Praetorians a bit. That exactly. is true. Like, if you have um, you can still use them for some, just things that you don't really have them anymore. I also like... But they're the only unit they got rid of. I yeah, also nice. like the revamp of Living Metal. So yeah. now the monoliths are not the win button. Yeah, now you can actually yeah. kill them. With they're still, your they're still, button. they're still win buttons because of all the abilities they have. Yeah. But they're not they're as they're very expensive. You can bring them down. down. Yeah, you can bring them down. down. You can bring yeah, them down a lot easier. Yeah. When let's face it, monolith was scary. It still is scary. Now can play things that to their advantage. Yes, um, but overall, it's just a lot of nice things they added to it. I mean, we can always go in more in depth later yes, on. Yeah. Um, yeah, but there's one thing I think um, we should bring up um, us after this is is the new thing with um, Dawn of War Two, which is you can now download the Tau Commander in the Last Stand. Mm. So it's so much fun. And <laughs> honestly, fun. like I was like, eh, and then I played with them once, and I need to get this guy. Yeah, he does cost money. What is it? Like ten dollars. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Yeah. It's not bad. You're getting a full character DLC. with twenty levels. With full group of equipment, and oh, he's which is useful, so honestly. very useful. I, I can't derived. talk down about DLC. Uh, if you look at my channel, I've been playing Skylanders. So <laughs> it's not really down, but when you purchase it, yeah, in it's, but like, it's, it's a bit of yeah. It's like ten bucks just to get one view. It could be a bit of a stretch, especially if you don't play a lot of Last Stand. But yeah. Last Stand's a lot of fun, which is only it's the practically before. the only thing I play on Dawn of War. At this it point. is the only thing I play on Dawn of War. I did the campaigns like three times already. It's so yeah. good, and I like how just I was sitting there going, "How are they going to really do?" I like how they made it where he could be this long range god of destruction, mm -hmm. or he can be the support dude that makes sure you don't really die. Do. Right. My, what my, I like is okay. he's a lot like how the Tau Fluff makes a Tau be. He's mm -hmm. mobile yeah. firepower. Yes. No melee power whatsoever. <laughs> no, mobile which is firepower. The best thing about his no melee is they still gave him a melee animation, which is really just him going, don't hurt me! <laughs> batting things away with the shield but doing no damage, and it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely wonderful. Okay, I think that's all the time we have for Proud. today. Yeah, running out. So Thank you guys awesome. for watching. If you have any ideas for subjects you want us to talk about, put a link, put a comment down. Check out Cypher's Joker, Keeper of the Fortress, um, Star Lord, what? and and um, favorite, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And we did we'll wrong. see you next oh, time here on Touching Base. Yeah. 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 Bye. Yeah.